Thanks guys for being with us. This is Into Up Interview and today we're having Marina Arlova from Hot for Bots. Hi Marina. Hi guys. Thanks for being with us today. So the first question before we proceed any further. Hot for Bots, what is it? Hot for Bots. Well, it's an educational website where I am a teacher and you are my students and I teach you about linguistics or etymology. As every word in English language or any other language has a story behind it. So that's what I teach, where the words came from. We have checked today on YouTube, you had more than 415,000 subscribers. On your Facebook page is about 36,000 likes. You also participate now on Bankrate.com. You also have been a guest for, for zillions of times, so already factor. And also you had this Times Square digital billboard right now. So what's the secret of this incredible success? Uh, does it take to be smart and intelligent at the same time as in your case, or there is something else? Well, um, smart intelligent um, doesn't hurt, but also lots of hard work, dedication, and uh, uh, just uh, willing to do whatever it takes to achieve your dreams. <laughs> Times Square digital billboard, we just saw it as a news on your Facebook page. Um, could you briefly tell what is it? Frankly, guys, um, I have no idea that they would put me on the billboard. It was actually a funny moment when I saw it. And um, the people who, had, who did a deal with me with Bankrate.com, so they advertised uh, the deal and in order for them to promote it, they decided to put it on the billboard. I mean, what's the better way to do it, right? So they actually emailed me and told me about it. And I had no idea. I was like, oh my God, are you kidding me? So that was quite a surprise for me as well. That's a big surprise for fans. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. It's one of the biggest uh, billboards in the world. Actually. Yeah, it's quite impressive. And, and congratulations for being there. Oh, thank you. So could you please tell briefly your background? What did you do before and maybe what you studied before and what you're doing right now? Well, I actually came, um, I graduated as a teacher of Russian language and English literature with a specialty in philology. So I could be a journalist or a teacher or an interpreter um, in Russia. Then I decided that I want to expand my traveling experience and I wanted to come and live in America for a bit as I love traveling. So I, gra uh, I enrolled in a special program to come to another country as a nanny. So um, I came to the United States as a nanny living with American family and I was taking care of two kids. One was autistic and he was very smart with numbers. So we had a blast for a year and then you know after living in America for a year I, I realized how cool it is. <laughs> so I decided to, that I want to stay here and become a citizen. So now I'm a citizen of the United States and uh, I love it. I love it. This is definitely the country with a lot of um, opportunities and I'm very thankful for America to give me this opportunity to achieve my dreams. So do you believe in American dream? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I'm, I was a nanny. I had no idea that I would have 400,000 subscribers on YouTube, right? <laughs> I didn't plan it. I, when I discovered YouTube, I just did it for fun because I thought it would be cool to tell people about word, word origins. And all of a sudden, you know, eight months into it, everybody started like, Send me, sending me messages that they like it, that I should do more videos, and it just exploded. Because <laughs> you've been the first one to explain the origin of words to people on YouTube, right? Absolutely, uh, yeah. I'm the first one, actually, who uh, tried to explain the origin of words in this kind of format. Before, it used to be boring, you know, librarians, books, Old-fashioned stuff. Old-fashioned, so I'm kind of like a, a new style, a new wave of, of teaching. Did you have any fear when you were, you know, in the, in the first stage? Absolutely, absolutely. I had two glasses of wine when I made my first video, because, I mean, I used to record on my Mac computer, so talking to a little dot on my computer doesn't seem to be really... <laughs> you know, if somebody sees me talking, you know, way before, you know, 
seven years, no, when was it? Four years ago. So it was quite new back then. You know, Max were different designs and my friends were thinking I'm crazy because uh, they're like, why do you want to build a career on YouTube? It's all about cats and dogs. And I said, oh. well, I don't know. I, I, I think it's a great way to connect to people from around the world through a little dot. <laughs> is, 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 <laughs> yeah, I mean, speaking about, now. Yeah, speaking about your friends right now, um, are they a bit jealous of your success and fame? Well, um, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't like the word jealousy and um, I, sh I, I, I think it should be deleted from the dictionary because it's, it's, it's quite a negative emotion and uh, I think they're happy, you know, for me. I hope they are. The true friends and um, in the beginning they, they they were laughing and I couldn't go out with them anymore as much as I used to. So because I would be I would be my, by my computer editing and researching and being completely nerd. So they said, "Oh, you're boring. You became boring. We're gonna go out without you." And then when when I started, you know, achieving success and making money on YouTube, then they're like, "Oh, maybe I should do something like that." <laughs> now they're asking me advice like how to get views on YouTube. So by the way, how to get views on YouTube? Oh, it's a long process. The The best advice is to keep making videos. Don't stop. Just get built, built a large library of your videos that have not just like, you know, random videos, but brand them. So like build a branding. So every video has an intro, every video has an outro. So when people find you online, they look at one, then they click, oh, there is another one and, and another one. So they realize you actually have something going on and you're building something. That way they will understand that, oh, it's actually a brand. It's not just, you know, somebody running on the street or somebody falling off the roof. You know what I mean? Even if you want to fall off the roof, not that I, not that I advise you, but <laughs> you have to have kind of like, okay, special fall of the week or something. Uh, fair enough. Build a brand. So start thinking from the beginning that I'm going to build a brand. I am the brand. And that way I think if you put it into a universe and in your mind, you'll achieve it. We can say that you qualified completely as an entrepreneur, someone who's self-employed, you know, someone who's in charge for his own destiny. Um, what was Sometimes it? Sometimes it's really hard. I get anxieties. <laughs> right, right. Well, but I mean, what was your motivation to become a self-employed person? I actually never wanted to have a boss since I was a kid. Um, I never liked to be like told what to do. I'm a Sagittarius, you know, we love freedom. You do. I went to art school in Russia and I paint as well. I don't sing, I don't dance. I tried to dance and I failed completely. <laughs> I did this competition on YouTube. It's like Dancing with the Stars, but on YouTube. And right. it was, you know, quite a fall. But <laughs> I, I consider myself a very creative person. Would you recommend our viewers to watch you dancing on the YouTube or to just skip this? Oh, you can, absolutely. You can find it by just, you know. Did you come with some research plan, sort of business plan before or you just started it on scratch? I wouldn't say I sat down and came up with it, but um, I definitely had a name for it. Like, you know, if you notice, some of the popular YouTube channels have names like, you know, 749JK, uh, you know, ma'am or mister da, 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 da. so they didn't plan it they just like you know registered their youtube channel and all of a sudden one of their videos got really popular and uh, became viral you know how they want to call it in my case i i don't know i sat down and i i brainstormed and i was like oh what should because i knew i'm going to be doing words i knew i'm not going to be dancing i knew i'm not going to be talking to a camera i knew i i had to sit down record you know, write a script for myself and then talk about work. That's it. <laughs> How did you come up with this name, Hot for Words? Uh, it's like a Hot for Teacher, Van, Van Halen music video, the song, Hot for Teacher. Right. Like, I love words, so I love words. I'm hot for words. 
okay. it's a play on words, like too hot for words, she's pretty, but <laughs> hot for words, I, it means I'm interested in words, words make me hot. So there's an ambiguity in this name, in a mm -hmm. way. Is there any way you can, you know, probably recommend for people who just starting their projects uh, to raise money, to attract more people to invest in the project? Oh, look at that guy. Uh, what was his name? Uh, who did documentary about that African uh, criminal? Um, do you remember it, the, his video, his documentary got really popular? So, as far as I understand, he got popular first and then he attracted money somehow, right? Yeah, so I mean, attracted money, <laughs> it's, a hard, it's a hard topic. But um, just, I think, just, you know, do something you love. Don't try to copy anybody, just do something you love and through that I think it will show in your videos and once people notice that you're really passionate about the subject, either it's a movie or you know, a cooking show or a dancing show, the passion, the love will go, will shine through your video and I think people will feel it when they watch it and it will become popular. Was there any difference, you know, a couple of years ago or four years ago, to be precise, when you just established your enterprise, you know, in the way you approached the whole, you know, business process, if you definitely, want? Definitely, definitely. YouTube, uh, you know, YouTube, when I started, YouTube was quite new. It was, it was all about cats and dogs. A lot of cats and dogs and girls dancing in their bikinis, you know, the webcam girls. So when I saw <laughs> it, I looked at the most popular page and I was like, wow. You know, this girl is getting millions of hits and they just dancing. I mean, I can do something similar and get millions of hits. So I decided, you know, to wear really cute, sexy clothes because I know that's what works. You know, that's what people watch. You have to give what, you know, sometimes when you like, if you want to conquer the market, you have to do something what's popular, right? Just to start. So that's another advice. If you want to stand out in the crowd, um, you know, you can criticize what other people do. I think I've read it somewhere. There was, um, there was a quote, something like, if you want to succeed, become famous or talk about what famous people do. So you can be, you know, you can start in this huge world of vid videos on YouTube. You can talk about other people's work. That will work as well. So, pretty. Yeah, yeah, sort of what we're doing right now. Exactly. <laughs> oh, <laughs> smart. Is it any? I mean, do you have any mistakes you made on your way? Is it anything you regret about? No mistakes. I mean, I've done mistakes, but I don't like to look back. And maybe I should, but I sure. don't think I've made any mistakes. I mean, it was ups and downs, but you always learn from it. And I don't think it was. But, mm -hmm. uh, it was great. <laughs> What's your next step right now? Is there any plans right now you have, you know, for the Hot For Words? I mean, in one of your interviews, I read that you were thinking about Hot For Words and Hot For Music, maybe Hot For Videos and stuff like this. Uh, is yeah. there anything coming out? One of the approaches can be that um, Hot For Music, so you basically get people who are passionate about <clears throat> something, like, uh, you know, some girl who loves cars. So. If she can be hot for cars, she can be talking about that. And, um, you know, art could be a girl or guy talking about hot for art. That's one way to expand it. But first, you know, it's hard to find talent. You know, it's, I tried before and it's really hard to, to find somebody who will stick around, who will stick around for, you know, for a while with you. Because it's like marrying, it's like marrying, if I need to find somebody, they have to basically marry my business, you know? Um, right now, I'm more focusing to get a Hot Forward TV show. So we already have somebody interested, so keep my fingers crossed. Wow, fingers crossed for you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you remember there was this, this blog called Fred, I think, several years ago? Yeah, absolutely, Fred, yes. Uh, I know it. <laughs> yeah, what was, I mean, from your perspective, what was the secret of his popularity? The chipmunk voice. Right, Makes yeah, that was his popularity and being crazy kid. Speaking about kids, what did you enjoy most when your childhood? You know, when you were small, like eight years old. Oh, 
uh, I like to, to build little houses and play dolls. I don't know why. I, pl I actually built houses from the trees and blankets till I was 15 years old. You could go to this business with time. I believed in Santa Claus till I was 15 years old. My mom always makes fun of me. Amazing. I believe in Santa Claus, yes. When we speak about an education, what do you think is the biggest role of education for the entrepreneurs, you know, for business people? Um, does, you know, the university in general play any role or important role for the career of entrepreneur? I think um, it's very important because once you study and once you enroll into college, you broaden, um, broaden your knowledge about every aspect of life. So it's you not necessarily you don't need necessarily do what you uh, study once you graduate, but you have to go to college and 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 just broaden your knowledge, you know, about every aspect. And then once you do that you will know what you like the most. Physics, geography, literature, language, playing football, etc. But you do really need to try it, you know what I mean? You need to expose your brain to everything. To and different then energies the... and find yourself. Exactly. And once, you know, then the river will take you, you know what I mean? A couple of more questions. Uh, now that's about you know, if we speak about business and young people who want to be entrepreneurs, you know, and be in charge for their own destiny, uh, because IntoUp as a project promotes the culture of being self-employed, do you think it's important nowadays to tell young people, you know, about the advantages of being self-employed? Self-employed people are usually people who, whose business is all about what they love doing, I think. You know what I mean? Being an interpreter is doing something what you love, what you're passionate about. And that's why you go this direction, to self-employed. <laughs> so it's a great advantage. You can work from home, you don't have a boss. Perfect. Nobody's telling you you're late. <laughs> <laughs> Would you have any, any sort of advice for people who are afraid now, but really want to get self-employed? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Hi guys, um, this is Marina Arlova from HardForward.com and this is a special interview for Interrupt and I'll see you all very soon. Bye-bye my dear students. Be good.